Hey, what's up everyone? Pete the Guttural Monk here. Sorry I haven't uploaded in a while. Life has been absolutely fucking crazy for uh, the last couple weeks. I've got a huge stack to share with you guys today. I'm going to jump right into it with an album that was released last Friday. This is the new one from Age of Taurus. This is The Colony Slain out right now on Rise Above Records. Um, easily one of my most anticipated albums of the last couple years. Uh, the band has been teasing us with this one for quite a while now. Um, after Desperate Souls of Torture Times uh, a few years back, Age of Taurus has had me absolutely hooked. That album had become most definitely one of my top Doom albums of all time. A little bit of a different approach on this one. These guys still break it down and go Doom heavy pretty often, but there's much more of an uplifting, almost kind of heavy metal vibe about this one. I can't say enough good things about this. Um, the vocalist has a far bigger range. Uh, the guitar solos are absolutely shredding. And like I said, when they get heavy, they get really fucking heavy. Uh, do yourself a favor, check out track four. It's called In Dreams We Die. Um, it was the first single off of this album. Once those vocal harmonies kick in, I mean, it is absolutely breathtaking stuff. Can't say enough good things about this album. Definitely check it out if you're into any kind of doom metal, heavy metal, just a fan of great music in general. Uh, this will absolutely be on my year end list. The Colony Slain, Age of Taurus. Next up, uh, this is an album that actually came out in 2017, but I'm going to mention it in this video because I had no idea that there was a CD press. I don't even know if it was a 2017 CD press. It may have well uh, be a 2018 pressing. I have no idea, but I want to give these guys a little bit of love because I can't stop listening to this shit. Um, fans of doom metal, heavy psych, hard rock, occult rock, whatever you want to call it, you need to know Devil's Witches. This is Velvet Magic from Devil's Witches. Um, this is like some fucking throwback 60s hard rock, uh, and these guys do it so genuinely. Even the hiss of like an old school kind of reel-to-reel -reel recording um, is present before every song begins. Um, I'm not sure of the recording process for this album, but it is a totally genuine throwback sound. I love everything about it, man. These guys have excellent riffs, the vocals are fucking cool. You just get that vibe of this sleazy, kind of like sex-oriented, drug-crazed madness that would be going on um, during like the setting of this album, essentially. Uh, very Vietnam-heavy, so there's a lot of, you know, kind of war reference and stuff like that. Awesome fold out there with some lovely ladies. See the back of the digipack with some more lovely ladies. Um, I can't say enough good things about this album. This album will be played all summer long. Um, I actually streamed it last year when it was first released, uh, and the vinyl has a much different cover artwork. Um, I'll see if I can show you that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't say enough good things about this. If you're into any kind of, like I said, doom, heavy psych, occult rock, hard rock, whatever you want to call it, check out Devil's Witches. Uh, the album is called Velvet Magic. Um, pick it up right now. This is on Forbidden Place Records. They had this album at my door within like four or five days, so super quick shipping. Uh, it was awesome. The next two, technically one, I'm sure you guys have heard enough about, but I'm going to give you my opinion on these. Uh, this, of course, is technically the new Panopticon album. Uh, this is called The Scars of Man on the Once Nameless Wilderness Part 1 and Part 2. Different approaches um, to albums, to recordings from Austin Lund. Um, so, part one is, like you all know, I'm sure, this is the black metal album. This is probably the most aggressive material that he's done since the Falls of Roro split. Um, this doesn't have much of those dark metal elements that the last couple full lengths have had. I mean, there is some there, but this is more or less, this is an aggressive, fast-paced, in-your-face black metal album. Nothing but non-stop tremolos. I mean, it is hyper-aggressive. Uh, my biggest complaint with part one is the production. I love Austin Lund's production values of the other full lengths. I just think this sounds like it's recorded, like it sounds like I'm trapped in a box or something while I'm listening to it. It is way claustrophobic. It is way kind of like overwhelming after a while. You just want it to open up and you want to hear the guitars. You want to hear everything breathe a little bit in the mix. Not taking anything away from the, the material here. Um, I, I truly think that this is one of his best efforts to date. Do I think it's his best album? No, I don't think even these combined are his best album to date. Um, but this is absolutely fantastic stuff. So part two actually caught me by surprise. Um, I will purchase anything Austin Lund puts out. And part two was one of those things, I went into it, I'm not the biggest like straight up folk 
bluegrass kind of guy. Um, but his execution of this is phenomenal. And I was reading reviews online before shooting this video and a lot of people are complaining about his vocals and the strength of his vocals and how it's quite apparent on the second half of this second part of the album um, how he kind of loses a little bit of his intensity. I completely disagree. Um, to be completely honest with you, I like part two more than I like part one. I think part two shows him at a completely different level of songwriter and his ability to just completely captivate the listener into something different that they normally wouldn't be all about. Also, the production on part two is unbelievably clean. I mean, it's possible that he can record clean music. Um, and I'm not saying that I need everything to be super, you know, crystal clear, but part two is a, is a true sign that, I mean, he is quite good in the studio. And I know Spencer Morris is involved. There's another, there's a whole list of guys involved in the recording of this album. But I am super impressed with what you get on part two. Obviously, if you're a fucking diehard metal fan and you can't stand to listen to anything that isn't metal, part two is probably not for you. But I mean, honestly, between part one and part two, part two has my nod for uh, the better half of this wonderful full length. One more thing I would just like to mention before I get off topic on another album is uh, the packaging is gorgeous. The, the the photos are just absolutely phenomenal. Um, the inner booklets. Uh, are awesome. They both come with this nice sleeve. I'm not the biggest fan of these like vinyl replicas, whatever you want to call them. I mean, it doesn't even like sit closed when it's by itself. But you know, I'm not going to complain about it. Um, just it, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous presentation. And like I said, fantastic album. You can pick them up through Bind Dream Recordings. Um, you can pick them up uh, Nordvis if you're over in Europe. But uh, Panopticon. Uh, I'm going to butcher it if I don't look at it. It is The Scars of Man on the Once Nameless Wilderness, Part 1 and Part 2. Next up, I talked about this band in the last video that I made, and that was almost two months ago, so you, nobody remembers this shit. But uh, this was, once I heard the single, I said, holy shit, um, these guys are for real. Uh, this is a very, very young band out of Finland, and they are nailing this old school death grind sound. Uh, better than I've heard pretty much anybody do it recently. This is Galvanizer with Sanguine Vigil out right now on Everlasting Spew Records. Holy shit, man. What a fucking burst of just violent, old school, disgusting music. Um, that artwork uh, caught my attention immediately. Uh, this is done by the same gentleman who handled the, uh, the Demolik uh, album cover. Absolutely gorgeous, just extremely eye-catching stuff to me, to a fan of something like that. Um, pretty cool. This album actually comes with a poster folded up where the insert would be and then the insert itself with, you know, lyrics and other band info. Absolutely aggressive stuff. I cannot say enough good things about it. I'm actually going to feature this in a future video of just Everlasting Spew recordings because this label, if you're not following them out of Italy, is putting out some of the best material right now. Um, I am absolutely going to link them as well as every other album that I'm talking about in the description below. But do yourself a favor, follow Everlasting Spew, and definitely check out Galvanizer, Sanguine Vigil. This is another album, I mean, I'm already four albums, five albums deep into this, and we're talking about some serious album of the year contenders here. Um, check it out, Galvanizer, Sanguine Vigil, Everlasting Spew, absolutely fantastic stuff. Uh, while I'm on the topic of them, this actually came with that. So this is Quantum Hierarchy with Neutron Breed, four track um, EP from this Italian band. Uh, technical death metal, uh, but it has much more of like a uh, like an old school kind of like morbid angel feel to it. It's much thicker and heavier. It's not very noodly and wanky and all that shit. Um, really enjoyed this stuff. I'm not going to dwell on it for too long because, like I said, I do plan on making an entire separate video of just Everlasting Spew stuff because I cannot get enough of the label. Um, so check this one out. It's a really short spin. Quantum Hierarchy with Neutron Breed. Twenty bucks spin. Arguably having the best year that they've ever had in my opinion um, aside from this album they have two bangers coming up in the next couple weeks uh, of course the new tomb mold and the new chemist which I cannot fucking wait for uh, but in the meantime they whetted our appetite a little bit with ghastly so ghastly is another band from Finland uh, this is called death valor um, I had never heard of these guys before they released a couple demos they actually released a full length prior to this uh, it was on Misako Unoho, but I, I never actually got around to listening to it. This album, again, caught me 
immediately based on that cover artwork. If you're going to put out an old school death metal album, you need to have the full effect, the full packaging. I need, I need all of it to really believe what you're selling me. Because anybody can make an album sound like something these days. Immediately upon seeing this cover artwork, I said, I need to know what's on this disc. I need to know what these guys are all about. And these guys did not disappoint. Um, I cannot say enough good things about this. Everything th from the recording to the songwriting, everything is totally genuine. Everything is totally from that era, that 1991 to 1993 finished death metal scene. It's kind of out there, it has its quirks, and it just totally works. Um, I can't even pick a song for you to check out because honestly, I love every single track on this album. But I'd have to say, check out the Velvet Blue. Um, it's just, it's a fantastic piece of fucking death metal. Um, everything about this is awesome. Like I said, 20 bucks spin, put this one out. I wanna show you the disc because I'm obsessed with uh, the old school look of this disc. Um, there you go. That is fucking sexy shit right there. Um, so Ghastly, Death Valor, check it out, 20 bucks spin, old school death metal done so, so well. A little bit more black metal now. This album came out earlier in the year. Uh, I picked it up uh, about a month or two ago, um, basically right after the last uh, update that I did. This is Pan Faga with Jord. Holy shit, man. And these guys have a back catalog that I need to check out too. But this is just some awesome, aggressive, melodic black metal riffs for days and days. Uh, this is out on Nordvis, and you can pick it up through the Vine Druin web shop. This is incredible stuff. I am super happy with this one. And I'm going to go out there and say that this could most possibly be on my end of year list as well. Um, it is super, super aggressive. Um, check it out. Pan Faga, Jord, awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, this is Hellish God with the evil emanations. Um, this is some great meat and potatoes death metal. Um, this is just some heavy, violent, blasphemous stuff. Um, it just blasts you for whatever the runtime is, 30 minutes or so. And if you're a fan of Deicide, um, maybe like mid-era Cataclysm, uh, Jungle Rot, you get the idea. I mean, just thick, heavy death metal. Um, no bells and whistles, no major technicality. The recording is fucking spot on. It's excellent sounding. Um, but check it out if you haven't done so. That cover artwork is fucking awesome as well. I gotta give a mention of that. So, like I said, Hellish God, The Evil Emanations, Everlasting Spew. Uh, so next up, I'm actually going way out of order in this one. This is the only reissue that I've got on this update, so I'm just going to mention this one now. Um, this is Mare Cognitum uh, with uh, The Sea Which Has Become Known. So this is actually Jacob's first album that has been now reissued um, on iVoid Hanger uh, with some new, amazing looking artwork from Moonroot. Great stuff. Uh, this has, this shows you know him in an early development stage of the sound that he wanted to create for Mare Cognitum. It, to me, it's not Phobos Monolith. Like it, it's 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 good, but it's not at that level. But if you're a fan of the music that he's been, you know, creating for the last couple of years, you need to check this one out. Um, it is awesome. I'm not sure what the availability is anymore. I did pick this one up quite a while ago. Uh, but Mare Cognitum, the sea which has become known. Definitely check that one out. Uh, this is the new Augury album. This is Elusive Golden Age. The music held within is fucking fantastic. The vocalist has this serious range on this album uh, from very low, deep gutturals uh, to this almost kind of like shouting mid-range, I guess you can call it. Unbelievable musicianship throughout this one. Been a while since Augury released some material and they did not disappoint with this one. Uh, this is out right now on the Artisan Era. Um, you should also check out the other bands that they've got going on. But Augury with Elusive Golden Age um, definitely kind of uh, satisfies that technical death metal itch um, that I'm sure all of you are, are in need of. I'm going to do a little shameless self-promotion here. Uh, this album actually came out last Friday as well. This is a new album from my band. This is Apocryphix with Eternalist. Um, technical, I guess you can call it brutal death metal. Um, definitely more of a progressive edge on this one. Um, it has a lot of dissonance, murky passages into clean passages, and then straight back into brutality. Um, we're getting great response from this one. Um, of course, I'm going to link it in the description below uh, if you wanted to check it out on our Bandcamp and maybe even purchase a copy. But uh, we're very happy with this one. Uh, we actually uh, brought on Kevin Paradis uh, for his drum skills on this record. Um, you may know him from Benighted and Svart Crown, Sutra, 
and a whole slew of other incredible bands. Um, he was absolutely amazing to work with, and this album came out, we're very happy with it. Um, so, Apocryphix, Eternalist, cover artwork by Moonroot, he did a great job for us as well. So definitely uh, do me a favor, check that one out in the description. At least give a listen to a track, see what you think. Another Everlasting Spew release. Uh, this is Convocation, and the name of this album is Scars Across. So Convocation actually um, enlists some members from Desolate Shrine. Very slow, funeral, death, doom style, where this album really exceeds my expectations of what I think of when I hear Finnish Funeral Doom. This album actually takes on a lot of like experimental weird cleans. Um, there's also some like, not like chant parts, but like this, I don't know, it's like a female vocal that really carries everything and makes it extremely interesting to listen to. Um, it's four tracks. It, it has a pretty long runtime, but it's, it's a really, really awesome listen. Um, I highly recommend checking these guys out. Convocation, Scars Across, Everlasting Spew, um, Finish Death Doom. Last but not least for this update, this is Nidvin with uh, Seas of Oblivion. Uh, this is some cool atmospheric black metal. Um, I can't recall right now where the band is actually from, uh, but it was an excellent spin. Um, I actually picked it up kind of on the cheap from Amazon. This was a blind buy, 100%, and I'm very happy with it. This is a really high quality digipack and the material held within is excellent. Uh, so Nightwind, uh, Seas of Oblivion, it's actually called Tetramental One, Seas of Oblivion. Um, so check this one out if you are uh, into atmospheric black metal. Uh, that's all I've got for this update. Uh, like I said, I wanna do an Everlasting Spew video. Um, I'd eventually like to share some of this collection with you guys. Uh, but other than that, I'm just fucking chilling. So send me a message, write a comment, um, follow me on Facebook. Uh, Facebook, The Guttural Monk. Uh, follow me on Instagram, The Guttural Monk. You get to see a whole lot more shit that is not just 2018 stuff. Uh, literally, if I'm listening to a physical disc, I post a picture of it so you guys can see. And I post pictures of everything from fucking Emperor to Corn. I mean, I listened to some Corn last week. Whoa. Um, that's all I got, guys. Uh, Till next time. Cheers.